Today's guest is Zach Collier, the keyboardist of a well-known band from the Utah music scene, Michael Barrow and the Tourist. Michael Barrow and the Tourist have been building a fan base with their smooth tones and catchy riffs and have recently released their latest single, Clover. Welcome, Zach. Hey, hey. Zach. Thanks for being on. Thanks for having me. Yeah, yeah, of course, man. So, so we were talking a little bit before this, um, but you're from Provo, right? Is that where you all are based out of? Yeah, so we're all based out of Provo. Provo, Utah. Awesome. Awesome. So you've been going for a couple of years, it looks like, as a, as a band. Tell us about how you met each other. How did you all come together? Yeah, so um, Michael was playing a bunch of solo shows. Uh, and uh, anyway, he, he and I had a mutual friend. His name was Grant Fry. And he was starting a uh, like local record label. And so uh, Michael was one of his first artists. And um, anyway, Michael wanted to record a single, but he didn't have a band. And so Grant reached out to me. And he's like, hey, could you, you know, get like a backing band together? And so I just called on some of my friends from the music scene. You know, I've been around, uh, you know, for a while, just playing in a bunch of different bands. And um, anyway, so uh, we were Michael's session band for his uh, his first recording. Right. And uh, anyway, so we uh, we showed up, we played uh, the first song we recorded together was The List. It ended up on our um, our debut album. But uh, yeah, so he uh, we played finished and walked outside and we're like man that was a lot of fun let's be a band like let's not make this a one <laughs> thing so yeah and we've just been playing together ever since and that's awesome so kind of go over who's in the band then you're the keyboardist right yeah so uh, i'm the keyboard player um and then sandro and proda is our bassist um reed perkins is our drummer um, mark lanham is our guitarist and uh, michael barrow is the you know the front man right so he plays rhythm guitar yeah. and vocal Awesome. Awesome. Do you guys all write together? Do you kind of have a system there or does one take kind of yeah. the lead on that? Um, so our first, uh, our first record, Juno, was uh, largely songs written by Michael, you know, so he uh, took point on all the lyrics and the, um, you know, and the, uh, the melodies and stuff like that. And we just fleshed out the arrangements. But since that time, it's, it's mostly been a collaborative effort. Um, you know, so that's been fun. That's awesome. Man, that's great. So, so you guys all met. Um, it sounds like you've released. Actually, I've seen you released an album. I, I was checking out some of your songs before we uh, got on here. Love the sound, man. It's it's really good, really smooth. Like Bowie said, it's uh, the Clover, right? Is your or, yeah, yeah, Clovers are yeah, um, our Clover's latest single. single. Yeah, and uh, Clover will be the the name of our uh, our record. Our record will come out this summer. Um, oh, so we've got a couple more singles before it drops. And yeah, yeah. How many uh, how many songs on the on the album? If um, there'll be 11, if you know, nice, nice, good length, good length. That's fantastic. So, so you guys met a couple of years ago. Um, what have you been doing in the COVID times? What, how's that been affecting your, your, uh, yeah, situation? so, um, it was kind of a bummer because in 2019, we played 50 shows. So we were touring the West Coast and, you know, playing all over the place. Um, nice. and in 2020, we had a bunch of, you know, plants that, play that much if not more and it all came crashing down in march and uh you know so at first we we're like okay what do we do you know and so we've we've done a little bit of live streaming but a lot of people like jumped into live streaming but we're like we don't like to do things if we don't have a a purpose behind it right like we don't like to do things just yeah. to, to do it right um yeah. you know so we'll live stream when we've got something to share you know we did uh you know, but mostly we just retreated into the studio. So like we, uh, we released a remix record in 20, uh, in 2020, uh, we released like a lo-fi home recordings record, um, at the beginning of 2020. So, um, and then we started recording Clover, um, in the summer of 2020. So we kind of pulled a, a Taylor Swift, you know, she recorded two albums <laughs> and then re-recorded Fearless, right. You know, we, uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah we just, uh, yeah, just did a lot of recording. Oh, that's awesome. So you toured the West coast then you said the, yeah, before that. Yeah. So in, oh, I'm sorry, what'd you say? Oh yeah, no, just before that. Yeah, so yeah, tell me about that. Yeah, so uh, we we played Washington, Oregon, Idaho, Utah, Nevada. Uh, you know, I the only place, I mean, West Coast really, like we didn't play California, you know, which is an oversight, but yeah, <laughs> yeah made it down to, uh, made it down to Arizona. So we got to play Luke Air Force Base and uh, yeah, oh, just nice. played a lot of cool shows. So yeah, Portland, Seattle. Yeah. That's fantastic. So did you, did you set up those shows or were they kind of like, uh, like, I guess, did you tour with somebody else or did you just kind of go yeah, with was, you guys? It was just us. So we, uh, we set up the shows and we did, we partnered with so far sounds for, um, you know, for several oh, shows. Cool. Awesome. Um, you know, so they, they curate secret shows. And so we got to, yeah. Uh, yeah, play a bunch of so far shows, which is great. 
That's fantastic. That's fantastic. So, so tell us what your goals are as a band, as a, a group. It sounds like you're in college. Is that right? Um, so I graduated in 2018. Um, graduated. So yeah, okay. So no. Yeah. So all of us are done now. Um, but yeah, we all met in college. Uh, so we all went to BYU. Um, but uh, yeah, so I mean, our plans right now is just to, to see how far this record can, uh, you know, can take us because our, mm -hmm. uh, we've, we've been having uh, linear growth, right? You know, where each record, you know, improves upon it, you know, upon the, the previous one, um, yeah. you know, and so far, like, I mean, it took us, you know, almost two and a half months for Sweet Honey, you know, our, our biggest song yet uh, to reach 25,000 streams and Clover did it in under a month. So <laughs> that's a good sign. Um, yeah. You know, so we're, we're just hoping to, you know, have to match the success or, uh, you know, exceed the success of our previous records. And um, hopefully that'll lend to, to some touring, you know, um, we'd like yeah. to head over to the East coast as soon as we can. That's fantastic. So, you know, the new vaccines, they're trying to get the whole, the whole COVID thing situated. So the live shows, I mean, live shows will open up hopefully with that um, in that scenario at some point again. So would that East coast or are you guys hoping to do that sometime this year or maybe um, next year? So yeah, probably <laughs> next year. Um, next so year. for the rest of this year, we're, we're, we're planning on doing a live stream tour. You know, so we've got uh, yeah. a bunch of social media platforms we're going to hit up, you know, and uh, um, it'll be fun. We've got different things planned for uh, for each platform. So we're going to do a live stream tour and then uh, hopefully in the year with some uh, just some local shows. We'll probably hit up the state um, hoping to play Fork Fest again. We played Fork Fest last year in American Fork um, and that was a blast. So we'd love to. It's back on in June. So we're hoping to play that this summer and uh, close out the shows or the year with some local shows and then uh, hopefully hit the road next year. That's fantastic. That's fantastic. Well, so let's, let's kind of talk about why you guys got into music. Why, um, I guess, what does it mean to you all? What's, you know, kind of your emotional, um, goal? Is it like to connect with people or, or, um... yeah, connection is really the, the reason why we do it. You know, there's, there's certain things that, um, I don't know, not to get like super metaphysical, but like the science behind music, you're, making vibrations in the air right and then making yeah. other people feel those vibrations and interpret it as emotion right so like you're literally getting people to feel exactly how you're feeling um you know you, you create a feeling and then they feel it in return um and that's like the purest form of expression it's just being able to to communicate that clearly um you know the, communicate emotions that words just can't express you know and uh yeah that's that's really why we do it all of us are, are pretty uh pretty goofy we had a ksl interviewed us for uh you know for an article or whatever and their headline ended up ended up being michael bear on the taurus makes serious music tells bad uh, bad dad jokes so like that's <laughs> that encapsulates us right so you know we're uh oh. you know we're pretty goofy but you know we do feel things deeply you know and uh um you know, this is the way for us to, you know, to quote Brooklyn nine, nine cathart, right. You know, <laughs> <laughs> catharsis, right. So that's awesome. That's awesome. Well, so I was listening to Clover just a little bit ago, um, actually just like an hour ago. So kind of talk about the, the meaning behind that song. It sounds like it's, um, some sort of relationship, you know, it impacted that, that whole movement in the song. Yeah. So, um, that was actually typically when we write as a band, um, we write uh, like one or two people will take point. So like Michael will have some lyrics, uh, you know, or, you know, he will have written an acoustic version of a song and we flesh out the arrangement or, you know, I'll have some lyrics and I'll pitch it to the band, you know, whatever. Or Mark will have a guitar lick and, and typically we co-write between each other and then we take it to the band for arrangement. It's just really hard for us to like sit down five people in a room and all get on the same page and create something. But Clover was the first song where we did that. So pretty much, uh, how it is now is exactly how it was when we wrote it in St. George um, two years ago. Uh, we went down there for a cabin trip and it was three in the morning and Sandra just started playing this in a really simple bass line you know, between two chords and we loved it. And Mark and I came up with the, um, you know, the da -da 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 -da, you know, that little motif yeah. or whatever. Um, and then Michael just pulled out this big whiteboard and we just played Mad Libs and we wrote all of the lyrics, you know, we just, uh, for like three hours, we stayed up all night, just filling in the blanks. And so that song really is like, um, it's, it reflects relationships that all of us have had, um, where you're, you're so used to being alone or so used to things not working out that when you meet the one you're scared to death. 
So it's like, you know, I'm afraid I won't get yeah. hurt this time. You know, like I'm, I'm afraid it's going to work out because it's never worked out before. I don't know what to yeah. do with that. You know, so it's a, it's a hopeful song, but uh, it's like pessimistic hope, right? Like I've been, yeah. I've been burned so much in the past. You know, what if this, you know, what if this doesn't work out, you know? Yeah, no, I, I totally, I, I really liked it. I, I thought that it was, um, you know, the fact that you all wrote that together now, kind of that backstory, you know, thinking of the words again, that's, that's really cool actually. Cause it, it I, I thought it was very well put together. I, I really liked the way that it, um, you know, flows, the movements in it and everything. I, I, um, I enjoyed it uh, quite a bit. <clears throat> so when's, when's your next single? You, you mentioned that you guys are planning on releasing several singles until your, until your album, your full album. So what's the, yeah, so single? it should be one every other month. So 6,023 is our next single um, for people who liked Juno, you know, our first record, which is more, uh, more folky, right. Uh, this yeah. one's like a folk rock sound. So fans of Juno will really like this one. Um, and that comes out March 26th. I think it's a, the Friday of that week, the 20 something, you know, <laughs> yeah. that's, we'll be announcing that soon, but, um, but yeah, so 6,023 will be the next one. And then uh, we've got another one coming out in May and then we're hoping that the full album will come out in June. Fantastic. Fantastic. Do you guys have any music videos planned for any of these releases or? Yeah, we're hoping uh, we've got some videographers on the, on the radar, um, you know, and we're hoping to, to release music videos as well. Awesome. That's fantastic. That's fantastic, man. Well, so I like to ask the artists that we have on here um, this question because we get a lot of different answers and I feel like it's really important for for um, other musicians to hear this. Um, what is something that maybe you personally or you all as a group struggled with and didn't like in the moment? You know, it felt it felt kind of pointless. It felt like um, just kind of your burden to bear, so to speak, for the time. Uh, but then in hindsight, you're really glad that you had to learn that or had to go through that. Um, yeah. What's, what's something music? Yeah, uh, I mean, I think it's just when you lose, when you lose band members, right? Like uh, bands are really interesting because they're not like companies, right? You know, you, yeah. uh, you create a brand, right. And then anybody can stand in for that brand, right. You know, brands change over time and people can feel that, but it's, it's just a gradual thing and everybody accepts it. Right. You know, you're like, uh, you know, Amazon, Jeff Bezos just stepped down, right? Now, now somebody else is in charge, right? Then Amazon yeah. will live beyond that. But bands are cults of personality. So it's really hard when, uh, when band members leave because the, the music is so personal and it really, it really reflects that. And so we've, uh, Trevor Harmon was our first guitarist and uh, he wrote Sweet Honey and, you know, he wrote The Reason and there's a bunch of songs that, that people really like that Trevor had a huge hand in. And, um, you know, one thing that we decided early on was just that, uh, you know, it's Michael Barrow and the Taurus, right? The Taurus can be swapped out. You know, it's, uh, you know, Michael is really the, the heart and soul of the band, you know, and we're, that's been really freeing because, um, you know, uh, Trevor and Mark, you know, our guitarists are tourists, right? They can, they can come and play with us anytime, you know, so it's, there's not any sort of like exclusion, you know, um, and I felt that exclusion in other bands where somebody left and it was like, okay, we're, you know, it was like personal almost, you know, and this is just, uh, it's friends first. Right. You know, and it's, yeah. uh, Sandro, um, our bassist, you know, he and I talked about how like we are musicians first and tourists second, you know, so even if this band, you know, doesn't work out, there are other opportunities to play and to perform, you know? Yeah. So it's just learning, learning priorities where it's just like, okay, we are, we are friends and human beings. Right. And then we are musicians and then it's this project. So like yeah. not putting all your eggs in one basket, like you work as if all of the eggs are in, in that basket right but you realize that there's other opportunities um and it's just really freeing um you know it takes away the pressure yeah that makes sense you said you've been in other bands have you all uh i know that you said some of you came from different bands too how many bands have you participated in uh previously? yeah so this is my uh oh man this is my fourth band um so me and the drummer reed perkins we've known each other since third grade um, so we've, uh, it's been me and Reed versus the world, right? You know, we just, uh, we're from Vancouver, Washington, just North of Portland. Um, oh, cool. and so anyway, he's been in every band that I've been a part of. Um, and then he and Sandro were, um, in a punk band together called Doris Day and Sandro and I were in another band and then, uh, Trevor Harmon, our first guitarist. Um, I was in a band called date night and me and his band would play gigs a lot together. He was in a band called Jefferson and York. And so we, we played a bunch of gigs together. So we just kind of pulled 
made a, made the Avengers of all these bands, right? You know, and uh, you know, and pulled a bunch of friends together. So it's been really that's nice. Awesome. Yeah, that's the way to do it. Then you get a lot of uh, you know talented people, and like you said, good friends. You know, good good people that are uh, have have the same kind of goal there. Um, how, how do you feel about the scene here? Did you play in in uh, Vancouver? Is that Washington? Is that yes, yeah, so Vancouver doesn't have. I mean, most of the scene is over in Portland, right? You know, so Vancouver yeah. is across the river. You know, so Vancouver didn't really have a strong scene. Um, you know, and I was in high school at the time, so I mean, I wasn't you know yeah. playing bars or you know. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Right. So like the the biggest scene that I've been a part of has been um, has been Provo, um, you know, and I love the Provo music scene. Um, Sandro and I started Reach Provo um, back in 2015. We ran it for a year and then we uh, passed it on. But, um, you know, so we've, we've been a part of, you know, played at pretty much every local venue, you know, uh, past and present, you know, um, and we've, we've just done a lot. Uh, but the scene here is so talented. Um, you've just got more talent per square inch in Provo than in most places. Um, you know, just people who know music theory, who grew up singing, you know, have things to say. The issue here is it's very much um, based around the four-year college cycle, right? Um, and there's no infrastructure. So we've got major label presence up in Salt Lake, but they're mostly here to market to the area, to take outside influences and market here instead of farming talent from here. Um, and so we don't have, uh, we don't have, uh, people who book, you know, we don't, we don't have booking agents, you know, we don't have A&R, we don't have, um, you know, ad agencies that specialize in marketing for musicians. There's just zero infrastructure. Um, and there's yeah. currently a lot of people who are trying to put that infrastructure in place. We've got a great studio system. Um, you know, there's some world renowned studios here in Utah. Um, we've got a great YouTube presence, you know, uh, Utah has a, uh, the biggest, like the most successful crowd of YouTubers, um, above LA and above, uh, um, above London. Those are the next two cities, but Utah is the, uh, the most successful YouTube crowd, you know? So like we've wow, got talent yeah. here, uh, but it's just, uh, it's just about organizing that talent and getting people to, uh, to push through and to get a big break before, um, before they quit and become an orthodontist, you know, uh, <laughs> you know, so that's, that's the biggest issue is getting people to, to hang on, but we've had some great, I mean, it can be done here. You know, you've got neon trees, match yeah. dragons, the aces, the national parks, you know, there's, um, now Rip Momney and the backseat lovers, you know, like uh, yeah. it's growing, you know, so there's something happening here and we're, we're hoping we can be a part of it. Absolutely. You know, Provo is, is one of those places where it's not um, people recognize LA, you know, you can, you can in your mind say, Oh, LA, of course, the music city, you know, New York, they have their own thing. I mean, just roots in these, these kind of music cities, but, but Provo is one of those ones that it's not, as known to the to the country as far as um the talent and, and there is a ton of talent you know there's a lot of those those uh talented people like you're saying so so that's that's an awesome perspective actually i really appreciate that perspective of the infrastructure in your mind what would help um give give people more experience or more exposure um to the to listeners yeah i mean i i like what you guys are doing i mean uh figuring out a lot of people just don't know where to start. That's why Sandro and I um, created reach Provo was because we didn't know what was going on in the music scene. And the only way we could find out was if we were, we were scouring Facebook for, yeah. um, you know, for, for news, you know, for events or whatever. So we just started aggregating it and, you know, we started, uh, started the magazine and we're, we're relaunching another magazine. It's called Provo music magazine um, here soon. Right. But, uh, but anyway, we, uh, that aggregation is really important so that people don't have to, um, they can be fed local music <laughs> and curated yeah. music, you know, so they're not, because sometimes people will check out local music and it's their cousins, you know, friends band. That's not very good. Right. You know, or whatever. Totally. Um, Cause there's lots of people that, that start, uh, you know, that start playing music, you know? And uh, I mean, my first show in Provo with my band, we had over 150 people there and we blew it and <laughs> nobody came again you know um so i've been there i've been that bad band uh you know and so um it's just about getting people to see that there are quality bands and to get excited about that when they find somebody good they're like oh my gosh that's great um but i like what you guys are doing where it it does the work for you you know you can you can discover uh you know local music i think that's a, a great idea thank you thanks appreciate that well i think that's a good point you know you said you played your first show 150 people there kind of, you know, blew it. You know, you felt like you blew it. We have a similar story <laughs> and I'm sure a lot of other artists do out there, you know, that's uh, so it, it is, it is, I think important that people understand that these are people too, that have to grow with what they're doing, you know, and 
you won't always hear perfection, but that, yeah, so that's, that's a great perspective. I, that's cool that you're doing those magazines. I, yeah. That's, that's very respectable. Um, when do you launch the new one you said? Um, so we're hoping to launch, uh, launch by the end of June is kind of our target date, but, uh, yeah, we're still trying to, trying to figure that out. <laughs> well, that's awesome. Well, Hey, thanks for, uh, dr- thanks for joining us today. It's been really great to have you on and, and, uh, get your perspective and what's, what's a piece of advice you would give for musicians before we, before we end here? Um, oh man, that's, I guess I'd break it down into two things. One, um, don't give up, right? It's largely a numbers game. You know, consistency is key. Um, the, it's very rare that you have somebody go viral and then stick around, right? Like you hear overnight stories like panic at the disco. They put one demo up on MySpace. They'd never played a show before. And then Pete Wentz of Fallout Boy heard them and signed them in a Del Taco and then they won a Grammy that year, right? Like that never happens. You know, right. most of the time, um, you know, it's like Portugal, the man, right? They were a band for 11 years before Feel It still went big, you know, um, and they just kept at it and they, they made music, they were consistent. Um, you know, so it takes, uh, it takes a long time uh, to gain that momentum. And it's just about building um, and doing what you love, you know? So um, you've got to do it because you love it. Um, you know, and because if you're doing it for the money, uh, there are much easier ways to make money, you know? (laughs) So, um, that being said, you also need to treat your music like a business, right? Like, um, you know, so, I mean, some people are just like, yeah, you don't do it for the money. Right. And the people who normally say that are the ones who are broke. Um, (laughs) you know, there's some stereotypes, there's this meme that I hate where it's just like a musician is somebody who you know who puts five thousand dollars worth of gear in a five hundred dollar car and drives five hundred miles dollars from a gig right and i'm like that's not a musician that's an idiot right like you got to do the math you got to do things that make sense right you got to be strategic about it um you know because money will allow you uh to do more music right it's really really nice to be in a position where you're like all right we are recording at a world-class studio uh you know we are working with great producers and I don't have to pay for it. The band paid for it, right? The band, yeah. our strings made money and now we have another record for free, right? Like that's yeah. great. And it's a better record, you know? So yeah. that's, that's a place that I hope all musicians can get to, um, you know, but it takes planning. It takes, it takes work, it takes budgeting, you know, you just gotta, uh, gotta be strategic about that, but don't give up. It's a slow burn, you know, it, t- it takes time to grow. Um, but yeah, you, you just gotta do it because you love it, but do it intelligently. That's fantastic. That's fantastic. Well, hey, thanks for that. We appreciate it. And uh, we'll, we'll be posting this, like we said. And we'll, uh, so where can people find your, your band there then so that we can make sure to get the tags in? Yeah, so um, Instagram is at Michael Barrow and the Taurus, you know, spelled out. Uh, Facebook, just search Michael Barrow and the Taurus. You'll find us, um, you know, and then on Twitter, it's MB underscore and underscore Taurus because our name is too long. Uh, <laughs> got to figure out a better handle, but yeah, you can find us on, uh, on Spotify, SoundCloud everywhere. Um, you know, if you like us, uh, send us a message, you know, normally we, uh, we respond. So we like, we like meeting people and, and talking. Fantastic. Fantastic. Well, Hey, thanks again, man. Bowie, do you have any other questions that, uh, you'd like to ask right now? Yeah. One last question. Um, since you've been in a few bands and I'm sure you've gone through the highs and lows of those relationships, what's a piece of advice you'd give to other artists to kind of keep those relationships on the good side rather than the bad and what's kind of been your best experience with those bands? Yeah. So, I mean, three things, uh, don't text each other when you have problems, right? That's uh, <laughs> something I think everybody needs to learn is, uh, you know, you project your own feelings when you read something, right? It's not a clear form of communication. And oftentimes you say things that you wouldn't say in person. Right. So, um, if you have an issue, you know, like, uh, call each other up, take each other to lunch, you know, figure it out in person. Um, uh, Number two, um, you know, I think that uh, everybody needs to learn to compartmentalize, right? Just because you've got an issue with band scheduling or you don't like how a song turned out, right? Um, You can work through those things without being, being mad, uh, you know, and holding a grudge, right? Um, one thing that we do in Michael Bear on the Taurus is if we, we, we use Slack to communicate, right? Um, and to keep our messages organized because we talk all the time. Um, but if we're having a hard conversation in one channel, right? You know, where we're talking about an issue and people are getting, you know, it appears that things are getting kind of heated. At the same time, we'll be sharing 
funny, uh, funny memes in another channel, right? So it keeps it light. So we're, we're having a conversation and joking through, through the process, right? And then the, the third one is just remember that at the end of the day, music is really silly. Like you can boil it down to, look, I made a sound. I want everybody to hear the sound. That's stupid. It's really silly. Just like you can boil everything down to, you know, like football, you know, you're a professional football player. It's like, look, I caught this circle. I want everybody to cheer for me as I run around with the circle, right? Like, or I guess an oval, whatever, uh, you know, like <laughs> everything is really dumb, you know? Um, and we, sometimes we take it too seriously. So don't, people are the most important relationships are the most important. The things that you learn are the most important. So um, identify yourself as a human being before you identify yourself as anything else and identify others the same way. Um, and that'll help you sort through, through problems and keep those relationships. Love that. Thanks. It's fantastic. Yeah. Well, hey, thanks again, man. We'll have to stay in touch. We'd love to um, yeah, see where you're going from here. You know, check out the new songs and, and see you live too. And when you guys uh, start those shows up again, we'd love to, to come check you out. And uh, we'll, just, we'll just stay in touch and, and we'll talk to you soon. All right. Sounds great. Thanks, guys. Hey, thanks, man. Take hey, care. Thanks, man. thanks again. Hey, we'll see, see ya. ya. <laughs>